phosphorus exists as P4 whereas sulfur exists as S8. So you can see that sulfur molecules are, are larger than phosphorus molecules because obviously sulfur molecules have 8 atoms and phosphorus molecules have 4 atoms. So, they are, so sulfur molecules are larger so they have more surface contact points and therefore stronger van der Waals forces between them. And you can also see that sulfur molecules have more electrons compared to phosphorus molecules because obviously more the number of atoms, more the number of electrons in the molecule. And therefore, um, the, therefore the van der Waals forces between uh, sulfur molecules will be stronger than the van der Waals forces between phosphorus molecules. So that's why sulfur has a strong, higher melting point than phosphorus. Then chlorine has a lower melting point than both phosphorus and sulfur because chlorine exists as Cl2, it's diatomic, so it's smaller than this and smaller than this and hence lower melting point. And then argon, it's monoatomic, it, 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 it exists as a single atom. So again, lower melting point than all three of these. So that's how we explain these patterns of melting points. So you can note these points down. I've written them out for you over here. You can, you can pause the video, note all of them down and then we'll move forward. Periodic patterns of electrical conductivity. So as we go from sodium to aluminium, electrical conductivity increases. This is because from sodium to aluminium, the number of valence electrons increases. So the number of free electrons increases, right? Because uh, aluminium gives out three free electrons per atom. But while sodium gives out only one free electron per atom. So because there are more free electrons in the structure of aluminium, aluminium is a better conductor of electricity compared to sodium. So then sim silicon is actually a semiconducting material which means it conducts under certain conditions. And from phosphorus to argon, there is no conductivity in electricity because there are no free electrons, no ions, nothing. So therefore phosphorus to argon, no conductivity of electricity. So now, now we are coming to the chemical properties. So reactions of sodium and magnesium with water. Now when sodium reacts with water, it reacts vigorously with cold water, not hot water, like hot water is even more vigorous. So it reacts vigorously with cold water. And the resultant solution is strongly alkaline because the resultant solution is sodium hydroxide. And because of this OH negative ions, it is strongly alkaline. And the pH is between 13 to 14. So you can see how strongly alkaline it is. Then magnesium. Magnesium reacts very slowly with cold water. The resultant solution is weakly alkaline with a pH between 10 to 11. So you can see that uh, magnesium hydroxide is actually very weakly alkaline because it is actually weakly soluble in water. So because it is weakly soluble in water, it's weakly alkaline because it does not dissociate completely. So magnesium... Has a, has, a, has a lower pH compared to so, uh, magne uh, the hydroxide of magnesium has a lower pH compared to the hydroxide of sodium. Then magnesium reacts vigorously with steam however. So when so over here water is in liquid state. Here water is in gaseous state which is steam. So magnesium will react vigorously with steam to give solid magnesium oxide, solid magnesium oxide and hydrogen gas. Now Oxides of period 3 elements. This is a very important topic. So the period 3 elements, so this is how they react with oxygen. Sodium reacts with oxygen to form an ionic compound with a giant ionic lattice, an ionic compound which is sodium oxide. So when this reaction takes place, we see a yellow flame and a white solid is formed as the end product. So sodium oxide is a white product. So you, you, need, to re re uh, you need to remember these colors because you will have to write them in the exams. Then magnesium reacts with oxygen to form magnesium oxide. Again, it's, it's a giant ionic structure, ionic bonding throughout the structure. We see a white flame and a white solid is formed. In the case of aluminium, again, it reacts to form aluminium oxide, giant ionic. We see a white flame in this case as well and then we see a white solid. So in all three cases, we see a white solid. In these two cases, we see a white flame as well when the reaction is taking place. For sulfur, we get sulfur, uh, we, so for, sorry, for silicon, we get silicon dioxide, which has a very high melting point, uh, but we don't need to know, uh, we don't need to know the observation. It's not in our course. We act, it's actually a white solid, so you can write white solid if you want to, but you don't need to remember it. We see it's, it's a white solid formed by white flames. Then 
for phosphorus uh, for phosphorus we get a p4o10 which, which is 